Hello again, everyone continuing with New York Weeks. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing New York over the course of two weeks since there is two, team, two teams in each league for New York, obviously big sports town. And I finished the NBA talks with my look at the Nets and the Knicks. And I'm going to switch over to the NFL now and look at the Giants. I think it's a little easier to talk about the Giants than the Jets, at least in my opinion, uh, with the success that these teams have uh, are going to have um, going forward and have recently had. Uh, with the Giants, although last year they did finish 6-10, and 10, uh, the NFC East is a pretty tough division. Um, you got the Cowboys, you got the Eagles, definitely two teams that I, I think have added pieces and have pieces and talent that can get them to the playoffs and deep into the playoffs. The Redskins, as much as a question mark uh, RG3 is, uh, I think a couple of years ago he was a question mark. I think he was you know, the future of that team after his couple knee injuries, maybe not so much anymore. His style of play isn't going to allow him to play that way anymore. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see what happens with, with Washington. But really, I think this can be a three-team division, and I don't think the Giants are a team that can just um, you know, not not win this division and not compete in this division. Like I said, 6-10 and 10 record um, obviously isn't great. Probably to win the division, they're going to have to have a 10-6 and 6 record. Um, maybe even 11 and five. Like I said, the Eagles and Cowboys are very competitive and solid teams there. So we'll have to see what happens. They they definitely have the pieces and, and the talented players to have a record way better than six and ten. And uh, I definitely think that they will improve this upcoming season. Uh, offensive line it was clearly an issue. Um, reason I'm saying that is based on their number nine overall draft pick being Eric Flowers, uh, the offensive guard out of. Uh, out of Miami. Uh, usually, if you see a top 10 pick going on the offensive line, it's probably because that's an area your team struggled with. Usually, when you see top 10 picks, it's chances are if you're a rebuilding team who needs a quarterback, you're drafting a quarterback. Um, or it's going to be defensive lineman, maybe a linebacker, an elite wide receiver might go in the top 10. Um, but if it's an offensive lineman, that's definitely an area that your team has struggled with and an area that you definitely need to improve on. Uh, Eli Manning was sacked 28 times last year, uh, so almost two sacks a game. You obviously want to get try to get that number down. Not that 28 sacks isn't ridiculous. Um, it is a little high. Um, if you can get that down to 20, I think that that, that would be okay. Um, if your team gives up a sack, maybe even one and a half sacks a game, that that's something that I think the coach is going to be okay with. Obviously, a coach would love to finish a whole year and the quarterback gets sacked zero times. But that's just being unrealistic. You know, even the best offensive lines are still going to have their quarterback get sacked every now and again because defensive coordinators find ways to, you know, take those opportunities when maybe an offensive line isn't, um, you know, set up in a way to protect against a rush or, you know, a def defender comes out of an area that you didn't see that defender coming from. So just de good defensive coordinators find a way to get to the quarterback, regardless of how great your offensive line is. But definitely bringing in a guy like Flowers is going to help that offensive line for sure. Um, then it switches over to the defensive side of the ball. Their offense, I think, is solid. Um, I'll get to that in a second. I'll finish off with my thought on the draft first. I'm just going to look at the first three rounds for the draft. Like I said, ninth overall, Eric Flowers. 33rd overall pick, early second round pick. Uh, Landon Collins, the safety out of Alabama, is obviously going to have a lot of expectations. Um, I think they're very high on this guy. Uh, and I think the backfield got a huge boost with him coming in there. Uh, see what kind of rookie season he can have for the Giants. And lastly, their third overall uh, third overall, third round pick, not third overall, third round draft pick. I know I'm going to pronounce the name wrong, so I apologize. Defensive end out of UCLA, um, Odegzuma. Again, like I'm not even going to try to pronounce that right because I will take 20 minutes just trying to find out how to pronounce his name correctly, um, and I'm, I'm not going to do it, but hopefully that's at least close. Uh, like I said, defensive end out of UCLA, and I think he's a steal in that third round. Um, I thought he was, you know, a mid-second round pick kind of a player. I think he dropped, and uh, obviously with Pierre Paul being being out, this guy's going to see some playing time, and I think he's going to help out that defensive line for sure. Those are their uh, guys that they drafted in the first three rounds. They had uh, one pick in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round as well. Uh, so not a lot of draft picks. Definitely not uh, a way that they were going to try to rebuild a team with a ton of draft picks. And like I said, you can find sleepers in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round, but the top three rounds are probably guys you've scouted deeply and uh, are going to make an impact uh, more immediately on your team. So those are the the three draft picks um, this past year that I that I'll talk about with the with the Giants. Looking at their offense, obviously you got Eli Manning. 
who I think I think is a great quarterback. I'm not sure if he's top five in this league. Definitely think he's top ten. When you look at his numbers from last year, it is 63.1 completion percentage, a little low. Um, you know, if he can get that up to 65, that'd be great. Uh, but he did have 4,410 passing yards, 30 touchdowns to 14 picks. So solid numbers, solid numbers f- uh, from him last year, and I think he can be the quarterback to take this team, you know, to a, to a more impressive record than a six and ten um, record for sure, and even potentially, you know, a playoff berth. Um, I definitely don't think they need to find a new quarterback or you know change anything up with that. I definitely think he can be a solid solid quarterback going forward, um, and it, he does have a, a decent receiving core. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. I think would be a number one receiver on multiple teams. Uh, last year he had just over 1,300 receiving yards uh, off of 91 receptions, so he's a number one uh, and definitely um, a target that Manning can rely on for sure. When you look at some other receivers they have, uh, Randall, I think is a solid number two last year. He had 71 receptions for just uh, under 1,000 yards, 938 yards from him. So you have a 1-2 combination there if that could easily get 2,000 yards. And if you can get a 1-2 receiving combination, um, that can get you 2,000 yards. That's solid. You add in a good, solid veteran like Victor Cruz. Last year, he only had 23 receptions, but still had 337 yards off of those. Preston Parker had 36 receptions for 418 yards. So you got some other solid receivers there. And then when you can add in a tight end like Donnell or Donnell, um, who had six touchdowns last year off of 63 receptions for 623 yards, it's a solid receiving core. Um, if you can get a tight end that can, you know, get 600 plus receiving yards, that's solid. And you already have a receiver in Beckham Jr. who is going to have another thousand yard receiving um, season. Knock on wood, barring injury, anything like that. Um, and Manning is a solid quarterback. So good receiving core, solid quarterback. Add in the run game where you got Williams, Jennings, and you've brought in uh, Vereen, who I think was maybe underutilized uh, when he was playing in New England. Uh, definitely those three guys I think could average 2,000 rushing yards for the season If uh, between those three guys. Maybe that's a possibility. Uh, Andre Williams had 217 rushing attempts last year for 721 yards. And then Jennings had 167 rushing attempts for 639 yards. You bring in Vereen, who last year just had 96 rushing attempts for 391 yards. Again, while playing with New England. I think he's going to get a few more touches this uh, this season playing with the Giants. And I think um, I think you got a one-two combination with uh, Beckham Jr. and Randall to to res- get 2,000 receiving yards, and then I think those three running backs and Williams, Jennings, and Vereen can rush for 2,000 yards. I think I think they have a very well balanced, solid, talented offense. It's going to be the defense that if they don't find a way to get to a 500 record or better and make the playoffs, it's going to fall onto them. Quickly looking at the linebackers. You got JT Thomas last year who had uh, 84 combined tackles with five pass deflections and a couple picks. McLean had 75 tackles with two and a half sacks. Um, uh, Kennard had 36 tackles with four and a half sacks. Uh, Casillas, Casillas, who last year played with New England in just eight games with New England, had 28 combined tackles there. Uh, Herzlich had 35 tackles with a sack. And then you also had uh, Beeson, who did not play last year, but back in 2013 had a 93 tackle season. So decent linebacker core there. You look at the DBs. Um, obviously, you got uh, Rogers, uh, Rogers Cromarty, um, who isn't the player he used to be, um, but he can still be a solid player. You know, last year he had 38 tackles with 12 pass deflections and a couple picks. I think he's a good quarterback, a good cornerback for this team. Not sure if he'd be a number one cornerback, but definitely a solid number two. Um, for me, their number one cornerback uh, only played half a season last year. Probably going to be another name I pronounce incorrectly, so I apologize again for that. Uh, Amak Amukamara. Uh, last year, he had 46 uh, combined tackles with 11 pass deflections and three picks. Now was just in eight games, so I think this guy has the potential to be disruptive on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe get to 100 tackles, 20 pass deflections, five picks. Something like that. If this guy plays a full season, I definitely think that him as well as Rogers Camardi are a solid cornerback uh, combination there. Uh, Brown is in a Brown and McBride are a couple other cornerbacks who last year had 31 and 21 combined tackles respectively, uh, with a couple pass deflections for Brown in only eight games he played in. And then McBride had a pass deflection, a sack, uh, an interception, and he only played in five games. So it's still got a lot of guys here who only played half a season last year and still have a lot more to to give and prove to this team. Looking at the defensive line, like I said, um, that third-round pick out of UCLA, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name again because I'm going to pronounce it wrong and I'm going to feel bad and I apologize again. 
but he's definitely going to get some playing time and have an impact on this team for sure. Who knows if uh, Pierre Paul can can come back and play with four, play with nine fingers? We'll see. Um, you know, he's definitely got the talent, and that would be an interesting story to see how he bounces back from that. But you got uh, Ayers and Hankins and Jenkins and all these guys that can go out and get you five plus sacks over the course of a season. So I think I think I think it is the defensive line though that would be their weak spot. I don't really think they have an elite pass rusher that's going to have a ten plus sack season. I think they got a solid group there where a lot of guys are going to go out and get five six sacks, but not that elite defensive player that's going to go out and get them ten plus sacks. But overall, I think they have a very competitive solid roster on this team. I think the offense is definitely their strong suit compared to the defense. I think they have the talent to to get to a five hundred record and maybe a playoff berth. Definitely not a six and ten record again this year. For New York, if they do have another six and ten record, I see a lot more changes happening with this team next year. Those are my thoughts on the Giants, though. I'll uh, be talking about the Jets tomorrow as I continue New York week. Thank you all for listening and watching. I do appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at gham614. I'll be back tomorrow with my thoughts on the Jets. Bye bye for now.